Hi, this is Jens Zuring, and this is my second reaction video to the Netflix series Till Murder Do Us Part, Zuring vs. Hasem. This video is about the 20 pieces of evidence, yeah, you heard right, 20 pieces of evidence that are simply not in the Netflix series. They're missing. At the end of this video, I'll be talking about my speculations, why Netflix did not want you to know about this stuff. But first, let's look at these 20 pieces of evidence. The 20 pieces of evidence that Netflix did not want you to know about. The first three pieces of evidence that were suppressed by Netflix have to do with the things I talked about in my first reaction video. The first is the report by Professor J. Thomas McClintock. He found that the blood samples from the crime scene had not been mixed or contaminated, and therefore the DNA test results are reliable. Netflix didn't tell you about that. The second piece of evidence is actually three reports from three impressions experts who found that the sock print has no forensic value at all. These are Rick Johnson, Russell Johnson, and Frederick Webb. They gave written reports that show that the sock print proves nothing. Netflix had these reports, but you didn't see them in the series, did you? A third piece of evidence is the trial testimony of Yale Feldman. That's the hotel manager of the Marriott Hotel, where Elizabeth and I stayed on the weekend of the murders. He testified in court that the room service order had to be given between 5.30 p.m. and 11 p.m., more likely 11 p.m. You didn't see that in the Netflix series because it basically destroys the theory that Elizabeth and I committed the crime together. One of us had to be in Washington, D.C. ordering room service, and that person was me. The fourth piece of evidence that Netflix didn't want you to know about is the fact that Elizabeth Hasten actually confessed to the crime. On June the 8th, 1986, she said, on tape, I did it myself, I got off on it. I did it myself. Damn, I got off on it. The fifth piece of evidence is the fact that Elizabeth's blood group, blood group B, was found at the crime scene. It was found on a rag near the body of her mother. You didn't hear it in Netflix. The sixth piece of evidence that Netflix didn't want you to know about is the fact that Elizabeth was observed by two witnesses how she removed her shoe and compared her foot to the bloody sock prints found at the crime scene. That's pretty suspicious. The seventh piece of suppressed evidence is an FBI suspect profile. Shortly after the discovery of the crime, FBI Special Agent Ed Sulzbach came to the crime scene and produced a suspect profile. He came to the conclusion the crime was committed by a female perpetrator in a close relationship to the victims. One of the police officers, Ricky Gardner, denies that such a profile ever existed, but Ed Sulzbach himself gave an interview in which he said he did produce a profile, and Chuck Reed supports this. He also said there was a profile. The profile itself was never found, but other documents were found that clearly confirmed that a profile existed and they described the contents of the profile. In an interview, Ed Sulzbach went beyond his profile and said that he thought the most likely killer was Elizabeth Hasen. The eighth piece of suppressed evidence is the existence of unidentified fingerprints on an old plum brandy bottle and alcohol glasses right near Derek Hasen's body. Why is this important? From the crime scene, you can tell that the victims drank alcohol with the perpetrator or perpetrators before the murders happened. So it's really important whose fingerprints are on the alcohol bottle and the alcohol glasses. These fingerprints are not mine. I was eliminated as a source. So were the victims. We have no idea whose fingerprints these are, but they point to the presence of unidentified perpetrators at the crime scene. And Netflix didn't tell you about that. The ninth piece of suppressed evidence is the fact that there's a second genetic scientist who supports what the first genetic scientist, Professor McClintock, said. The second genetic scientist is Professor Moses Shanefield of George Washington University. He also says that the blood samples from the crime scene were not mixed, not contaminated, and they point to the presence of two unidentified men at the crime scene. It's one thing if there's one scientist saying this, but the fact is there are two scientists saying the same thing. The tenth piece of evidence missing from the Netflix series is the second sneaker print at the crime scene. You remember from the Netflix series, they talked about one sneaker print, which was definitely too small to have been left by me. But what they didn't tell you about in the Netflix series is that there was a second sneaker print found at the crime scene with a different treadwear pattern than the first. That proves that there were two different people walking through the blood in sneakers at the crime scene. 
The 11th piece of evidence missing from the Netflix series is the luminol test of the getaway car. Even the cop who thinks I'm guilty, Ricky Gardner, says that the getaway car was tested with luminol and there was absolutely no blood found in it. Why is that important? Because Elizabeth Hasem said that when I returned from supposedly killing her parents, I was naked except for being wrapped in a bed sheet and covered head to toe in blood. If that were true, then there would have been blood in the getaway car. But the luminol test proved that there was no blood in the getaway car. Number 12. Errors in my confession. Actually, there are a whole bunch of errors in my confession that are not mentioned in the Netflix series. And I made a separate YouTube video about all of this called Correct and Incorrect Details of My Confession. Please take a look. Here I want to give you just one example to give you a little taste of what's coming. In my false confession, I said that there was a long and violent struggle in the dining room. But take a look at this photograph. You can see that there are wine glasses and candlesticks on the table that were not knocked over. And on the fireplace mantle behind the table, there are greeting cards that have not been knocked down. If there had really been a violent fight here, all of that would have been on the floor and not still on the table and on the fireplace mantle. Number 13. Jean Bass, a neighbor of the Hasems, said that between the night of the crime and the discovery of the crime, she observed many cars in the Hasems' driveway. Pretty suspicious. Number 14. Sandra Thornton, an employee at a homeless shelter in Roanoke, overheard William Shiflett and Robert Albright talking about the Hasem's murders. She said she heard them say they had been to the house of a rich bitch and killed her parents. Number 15. The fact that there are three pretty good suspects for potential accomplices of Elizabeth's who might have committed the crime with her. Out of respect, I'm not going to name their names here. But the fact is that there are real reasons to believe that one or all of these three people could have been involved in this crime. And they were never investigated at all. I think you all should have known about that. Number 16. The judge in my case, William Sweeney, was a friend of the victim's family. And before my trial had even started, he gave a newspaper interview in which he clearly expressed that he thought I was guilty. And he did this again before my trial. Number 17. Five years after my trial, my lawyer lost his license to practice law because of errors he made in my case. Imagine that. The guy who's had my life in his hands in court was so incompetent that he is no longer allowed to practice law to this day. Number 18. In the Netflix series, they show you a letter that I wrote 38 years ago in which I use the word crushing and I use the sentence I have yet to kill. In the Netflix series, they make it sound like that had something to do with the Hasten murders, but it has absolutely nothing to do with the murders and the Netflix producers know this. I actually made a video about this. It's in my YouTube channel. It's called The Letters and the Motive for the Crime. Please take a look at it. Number 19. In this series, they show you somebody who says that Derek and Nancy Hasten, Elizabeth's parents, were against our relationship and that they hated me. But that's not the truth. At my trial, lots of people from the Hasem family and the circle of friends testified and not one of them said at my trial that the Hasems were against our relationship or disapproved of me. There was just not a single witness to this. Also, if you take a look at the letters between Elizabeth and me, Elizabeth wrote a lot about how much she hated her parents for controlling her and things like that. But never once in any of these letters did she ever say that her parents were against our relationship. This is not the truth. There is no evidence for it. Number 20. Netflix doesn't tell you that there are four renowned legal experts who looked at this case closely and all came to the conclusion that I'm not guilty. The first is Gail Starling Marshall, a former Deputy Attorney General of Virginia. The second is Professor Mary Kelly Tate, who is a recognized expert in wrongful convictions. The third is Dennis Donal, who later on became a federal judge. The fourth is Erwin Kotler, the Minister of Justice of Canada. These are some of the greats in their field and they all concluded that I did not commit this crime. Why would Netflix leave out these 20 facts, these 20 pieces of evidence? Of course, we'll never really know. We can only speculate. But I'll give you my opinion right here. In my opinion, Netflix didn't really have anything new to say in this series. Fact is that there's a lot more evidence speaking for my innocence than for my guilt. But that's a clear answer. And a clear answer is not particularly interesting. There's not a lot of suspense there. 
Netflix created suspense by leaving out these 20 pieces of evidence. They create an uncertainty by not telling you all the facts, when in fact there is something pretty close to certainty. I didn't do this. Here's the question for you. If Netflix doesn't tell you all this that I've shown you in the video, is that the truth or is that media manipulation?